Hello, and thank you for tuning in to a special episode of Data Leadership Lessons today. I am coming to you from my home office, but my home office doesn't look like what you see on the screen. This is my home office. I use a green screen for a lot of the things that I do, and I have for the past year. And the reason I do this is that as a data leadership consultant, as someone who's often at clients, when I'm not at clients, I want to be home. I want to work from my house. I want to be near my kids and my family. But I also want to present a professional setting for all of the many video chats and calls that I have to do. For as long as I've been doing this, which is a little over a year, people have said, Anthony, you need to create a video or walk people through how to go about doing green screening from their homes, because it is something that, you know, if you didn't know better, you'd think I was sitting in my home office right now. And I've, I've got it pretty fine tuned, pretty dialed in, and I'm using entirely free software to do it. So today I'm going to walk you through exactly what that is. So the main tool that we're using is open broadcaster software. We call it OBS. And this is a common tool, open source, used by YouTubers, a lot of folks that want to have something that they can control, video outputs, create recordings, and layer in different sources. We can do anything from screen shares to bringing in the camera outputs from or the uh, screens from our iPad. I can do that. I can do a lot of different things. Whatever I want to bring into a video, this is a great way to make that happen. So we use this to create the scene that you see. It basically starts with something that looks like this. And we go in, we add what's called a chroma key, which takes the green on the green screen and turns it into something that looks like this, which is nothing behind me. And then you can just add in whatever background you want. So if I want to add my home office background, I can add in that. If I want to add in a loft background and be like I'm downtown in a building somewhere, I can do that. And so it really gives me complete control over how I want to present myself for whatever client that I'm talking to. If it's a internet startup, I may opt for the loft. Or if it's just another individual that is looking for a remote work situation, I'll probably have this. But it really gives me the ability to present what I need to present in a way that will be non-distracting. I mean, if I had my green screen was not there, you just see stuff in the walls and somebody walk in and who knows what's going to happen. So like it just gives me and it really this this is the key for me. It's about being confident. It's about not feeling like I'm worried about what my office looks like or if my kid comes in. There's been times where I've been on a call with the green screen and a child comes into my room and I'm like batting them away. Like, stop. I'm just, you know, and so it's it just gives me that little bit of gap, that buffer between the professional and personal when I'm working out of such a personal environment. But the benefit is that I'm saving. I live in the suburbs of Chicago. I'm about an hour door to door from any downtown office that I've worked in and have for the last 20 years. And if I'm not on the road, which I often am with clients or at client sites, whether in the Chicago area or, or national, if I'm not on the road, I want to be home. I don't want a two hour commute. I don't want to ride the train. I don't want to drive somewhere. I want to be with my family, but I also need to get my work done. And so this allows me to work from the home, have a professional setting and save thousands of dollars a month on leasing office space or at least hundreds of dollars a month on commuting costs. And so that to me is worth doing. And I wasn't willing to trade off some sort of lack of professionalism. And so for me, this was the only way to do it. So let's walk through exactly what it takes. We're going to create, we're going to start by creating a new scene. So the scenes, and we'll show you. So right now I've just created a new scene. It's nothing. There's nothing there. You can see that it brings it a default audio source. So you can see our mixers doing something. But if you see, I have different scenes here. So here's the main scene that you've seen. <laughs> uh, here is a screen share scene. And instead of sharing the screen, which would give us this crazy infinite screen effect, I actually have just a, a different background. But I'll often have my face in the side here and walk through presentation decks or things like that with clients so they can see my facial um, emphasis while seeing the decks. And it's a really good way of being able to do remote presentations without being in the same room. Like you're, you're able to actually get a little bit more than just looking at a static screen. And I find that's very useful. 
here's one that I've been working on. So now I have two versions of myself, one with the green screen and one that normally I would pull in an external source of some sort. Uh, but I use this for having conversations with people and we're going to use this for our data leadership lessons. We're going to have interviews with folks. I'll be on the small screen and my guest will be on the big screen in whatever environment they're in, but they'll be able to talk about whatever it is that they need to talk about and we'll have a nice output here. And I mean, so this is just kind of an example of like the sky, you know, the sky's the limit on what you want to do with OBS. It's pretty incredible. And this is from somebody who doesn't have any formal training in any of this. I just kind of put it together and realized, hey, this is really powerful stuff and people need to know how to use this, especially because we're, we're working remotely more and more. So let's get back into how do we do this and and the the magic really is in doing the um doing the chroma key i mean that's that's the secret sauce here so we're going to just call this demo web cam we're going to hit okay we're going to pull in our hd pro webcam this is just a logitech webcam and we're going to do high because this is actually 1080p and you can see it's kind of moving around behind me all this does behind me you can see we can resize it we can put it in more screen so you can imagine like we can move it around. We can do whatever we want. But for this example, we're just going to have it take up the full screen and I'm going to lock it in place and then I'm going to right click on it and hit filters. Now filters, there's a bunch of different kinds of filters you can do, but the one we care about is chroma key. So chroma key, we'll just leave that the name. This is really where the magic happens. <laughs> I've always wanted to say that. The um, the reason is, is that we can take this and really dial in specific settings so that we don't get that kind of weird green glow. We don't have any of those uh, problems. And you can use different kinds of keys. You can even do a custom one, though I found even when I tried to do a custom one, the standard green works best. So you can the first thing to dial in is the similarity. So this is what's going to say, okay, I know it's a green screen. I'm going to dial in the similarity. And I know that I'm usually at about 470. And it may be a little bit higher, maybe a little bit less, depending on what the particular uh, lighting setting is for me. I have a window on the other side of me. So the, the lighting varies a bit. So once I get that dialed in, and you can see, if we move it to the side, you can see really clearly what it looks like on the OBS display itself. And you see there's a little bit of green around me still, but I probably don't want to dial in too much more. Cause if you see, if I dial in too much more, I might, I'm going to start looking like a demon or it's, it's going to be weird, right? So we'll try to get it close. So 480, that feels pretty good right now. Then you kind of just give it the tiny little bit additional twist and add in maybe 15 of smoothness. So what that does is it kind of just evens out that border around where the green meets my head. And that's the biggest thing. And so and then you have that. The key color spill reduction will turn you towards black and white, which can be useful depending on the nature of the screen that or the um, image that you're putting behind you. It probably can just be set at one. The other ones down here, I don't generally mess with too much unless I have really strange lighting circumstances. So if it's really dark or it's really light or something strange with the background that I'm choosing to use, then then I'll mess with those. But for the most part, just leave them alone. So now we're here. We have our chroma key filter. Now we need something else. So now we need to have a image. So I have an image and we're just going to add an image. We'll just leave it called image. And the key thing here is click unload image when not showing. So that'll keep you from having a bunch of stuff in the background that will be causing you problems. So we've selected hot air balloons and we are going to just hit OK. And we're going to notice, hey, this is not the right size. So we're just going to pull it into the right size. Now, if it was too low in terms of image quality, that could cause us problems. But uh, in this case, it looks fine. So we'll lock it in place. And we'll notice, uh, where did I go? It's because there's a layering effect for these sources. So if I move that back up, you'll see I'm back here. But wait, this is kind of not great because my web around isn't big enough to cover the whole screen reliably. So what I find is easiest to do is to go into this demo webcam and 
let's go to transform. If we do edit transform, that allows us to crop off a little bit of the image because we don't need the entire image. We just need the, the part where I'm on it. So let's crop off 150, 150, and then let's crop off say 200 from the top. That's gonna move me, but all we have to do is unlink it, move it back down, and you have a pretty nice image and you have a pretty nice screen. And now I'm talking in front of balloons and everybody's peaceful and thinking about nice summer days and going through the sky. And I picked a wrong thing for me because I would be terrified. I will never, ever do this, but it's pretty. So I have this and this is pretty much it. your basic setup. I mean, how long did that take? Even while I'm walking through it slowly, anybody can do this and it looks pretty good, I think. So if you have an ability to go get this tool get that green screen and it doesn't have to be one that attaches to your chair. You could have one that's on the wall. You could have something else. I've seen people use blankets or sheets and stuff like that. I, the, the screen that I have cost maybe $50, give or take it. It's really, it's changed my life because it folds up really nicely. I can throw it in the corner whenever I need to do a call. I can just bring it out and, and good to go. And it's uh, highly recommended. So this is the core. I mean, this is the, the basics of using the green screen to then create that image. And I can now just switch back and forth between these if I want to. I can go to my talk show, I can go to this, and I can use this right now. If I hit the start recording button, this is how I record my data leadership lessons. And that's, you know, I'm not doing it now because I'm actually demoing this, which was a little bit harder than you would think it would be. But I'm now able to do whatever I need to do and have any kind of image behind me. So this is a really powerful uh, tool and technique and can really help you Go to that next level when you're working remotely as a remote professional. I want to talk a little bit about Cam Twist. So I'm going to bring up the software and just kind of walk you through just a little bit of what it does. If you go to Desktop Plus, and so you brought in Cam Twist, it kind of opens to the screen. Desktop Plus is going to allow you to capture a piece of your screen, and it's going to allow you to select a particular area of your OBS or of anything on your screen to then create a virtual webcam. And it feels a little bit sloppy. And to this day, this is still the best way I've been able to come up with how to do it. So what you would do is you go into Desktop Plus, you add the source, hit add, it goes into this, it's on this screen, we do confined to application windows. OBS is what we need. And then what we do is we do a select capture area and we select where the screen is on the, um, on the OBS. And so in this case, we're going to just go, I just hit a command tab to switch screens. Like I said, it's a little bit finicky. And so we're going to do this and we're going to hit done selecting. Now I'm going to minim or I can't minimize this actually for have to have it work, but I'm going to have cam twist. I'm going to cover up OBS with cam twist and then I'm going to do control P to show the preview. This is what it has. So you can see that I have the preview. This is what, if I go into something like zoom, you'll see that zoom allows me to have this as a source. So let's do that. Let's take this preview off and I'm going to bring up a zoom window. And I'm going to start, so this is just Zoom, um, a free version of Zoom, no less. And I'm going to do a new meeting. And first, I'm going to start the meeting without video. And I'm going to bring the Zoom over here. And right now, the meeting has started. And I'm going to look here. Before I start the video, I have a few different options. So this is my main webcam. So if I do this, I'm going to have the green screen. If I start my video, here's my green screen. Okay, so here's where I've got just the standard feed, whatever's coming in from my camera hits zoom, but I don't want that. I want cam twist. So now you can see with the zoom settings, I have added in my cam twist. It was a little finicky because I'm trying to do this on demo, but it's uh, it works. So that's how we do green screening for the mobile professional. Hopefully this gives you the confidence to work from anywhere. I mean, if you brought your web around and stuck it to your chair in a hotel room, it wouldn't look like you're anywhere else. So don't be afraid to use the green screen and enjoy what you're doing with it. Have some fun. Thank you. This has been Data Leadership Lessons. We will see you next time. <laughs>